Good luck. Perfect timing, eh? I've only been here for an hour and a half waiting for him, but it's all good. <laughs> Someone's idiot is going to be here at six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, I jumped the gun a bit. Anyway, bro's ready to rock and roll. Safety status over there, brother, with that ruffle. Mags out, yep. bolts in. Yep. I'm on the same. <sighs> just about to walk off, just about to walk off up the hill and then wonder why the car was on a lean. Not a good way to start. Flat tyre. But uh, we'll sort it out when we come back. Me and the old bro, we'll get our YY Express up the Monga and uh, fingers crossed, eh, hey, brother? Yeah, bro. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Alrighty, in the jungle from here on. You all good, bro? Yeah, bro. Alright, sweet ass. We got about a, about a 40 odd minute crunching from here. Yeah, hopefully, Clag's gone by the time we get there. Alright. March and uh, probably four weeks the raw is going to start and here's a wallow that we always pass up here and fresh marks and old mate's been having a bit of a rub in it I think if we took the time to have a look around we'd probably find antler rubbings on the trees too I'd like to say we'd come back here to hunt the raw but too bloody dangerous I didn't invite to go up and hunt some pine forest up north, so it's a safer option, I think. Anyway, how far to go? Packs off, put you up, or fly up. Man, that clag's still pumping hard out there, so no hurry, but we are in a hurry. Uh, right. Right. I don't know if it's a military thing or it must be just the common sense outdoors thing, but try and have um, everything as taunt as possible with no ripples. A little bit of a ripple there. Um, the idea is that the water flows consistently off the side of the fly. Yeah. But I, d I didn't do this, I d he did, so that's why it's got a ripple. Your corner, but hey, come on, come on. <laughs> Not much to look at. A wall of white. <laughs> Righty. Both of our rifle statuses are no rounds in chambers, magazines on, facing out, hopefully where the deer is. Yours is, brother. Mags in, no round up the chamber, and yeah. the bolt is in, ready to slay. Ready to slay. Out that way. Anyway, we are, uh, warm gears on, squared away. Uh, we are going to have some breakfast. Yeah.
As the early morning cloud gave way to a beautiful day, it seemed the deer weren't playing the game, with only one scene for the morning and no shooting opportunity offered. With the sun getting higher in the sky and the heat starting to pick up, we came to the realisation that the morning shot was done. So with the grumble of our pukus getting louder and louder, it was time for some of Maddie's homemade pork and apple sausages on wraps. Well, it's uh, one o'clock. Still no deer seen, but it's you know pretty hot. So um, instead of having a snooze, um, I'll um, for those who don't know anything about my rifle, I'll quickly do a quick run over, and then I'll do uh, Maddie's. I'll get Maddie to explain his uh, rifle as well. I've got the uh, 300 Winchester Short Magnum Ticker or Tika or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's sitting in a KRG X-ray stock, got an Accuracy International magazine on it, holds seven. Um, I've got the Bipod of Death, I've got the Gunworks Maximus Maximus suppressor on there with the um, Wicker Stealth MOA suppressor cover, it's basically rubber. Um, and my optics are my March 3 to 24 by 52 F. It has the FMA2 reticle, it's in first focal plane, to be honest. It's only because Dave didn't have the second focal plane, um, but I leave it set at, I leave it set at 20 power, it's the right size reticle for me. Um, so that's, that's my baby, um, we'll uh, get Maddie set up and get Maddie to have a talk about his one. Alright brother, your way. So, What's the caliber? Uh, she's a uh, um, 300 Winchester short case magnum <coughs> caliber. That's the caliber. It's a ticker, um, and it's sitting on the KRG um, X-ray stock as well. And it's got the Conquest um, V4 uh, 6 to 24 by 50 um, scope on it. Got the Hardy's suppressor. With the MOA, uh, the Weka MOA Stealth um, suppressor cover, and that's sitting on the um, the Harris bipod as well, um, and the seven shot magazine that comes um, comes with the um, X-ray case. Oh, I can say, is it a twenty MOA rail you got on there? Ah, uh, yeah, twenty yeah. MOA rail. Yeah, I've got that on the mine too. Forgot to. Yeah. Forgot to, is that a push button? Yep, push button. Oh, you got to pull it out. <coughs> Got the level on it. Anyway, so that's the bros uh, rig. Um, so that's both our rigs actually. As the afternoon wore on, our luck started to turn. However, we weren't seeing enough targets to be overly confident, but we did kind of have a theory. Now, here's an update for you. One deer at, how far was it? 640. And all she did was show her, um, showed us her ass and guessed it. Mm. Um, we've seen nothing else. And we start going through these whole conspiracy theories. Maybe some bastard's been over there and walked all over there. Um, well, it's just one of those things, man, where every time we've looked somewhere, a deer's popped up in the opposite direction. <laughs> we haven't been looking. You know what? And on that note, yep, you guessed it, the deer started to pop. Only problem is, they are all out past 700 metres and the wind had picked up to around 12 mile an hour, gusting up to 15 not ideal shooting conditions for that distance but our luck was about to change got us one at 450 bro's gonna go off there
Go ahead, Ready? Put your hold. Hold on the back leg. Right. Middle of the back leg. Alright, right. ready? We'll go one, two, bang, okay? Yep. One. Okay, time for a shot analysis. Well, what I can tell you straight off the bat is that this was a poor wind call. With the round shifting only 5 centimeters left instead of the 40 I had anticipated, with the result being the deer being struck too far back. And well, if that wasn't enough drama for you, straight after lighting up the countryside with those two shots, a deer popped out 200 metres in front of the blind and Matty give it to him. Fucking calamity. You hit it bro, you flushed it. Oh, bro just um, smoke one at 2.30. I mean, it was just right here. Do you even have enough time for the cameras? So after a busy afternoon, it was time to pack it in, head back up the hill to our camp to settle in for the evening. Um, we're all squared away in our tent, talking a bit of shit, reflecting on the day. Um, but for dinner, we're going to be having kamo kamo, which is it's a relative of the zucchini. Yeah, um, a bit of a staple diet if you're. A mouldy growing up, um, kind of like yeah, we had it had it mashed, uh, well generally mashed, or with, um, uh, actually have kamo kamo in um, boil ups. Yep. You can have it in, or you can have it. You can even roast it. Yeah, you can have a mash, kamo kamo mash. Um, you can have it like we're having it, just boiled and with some butter. Um, but yeah, it's just a um, bit of a, I think it's I don't know, mouldy food, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think most of us natives grew up with that stuff, so um, that's the first time I've ever had it in the bush. It's because uh, I'm up here with a native. <laughs> <laughs> but we got um, some beautiful back steaks here, they're both going to fly up in there. The day sort of rounded as seeing a few deer in the morning, and a bit of a just a nothing happening period through the middle. Um, we took turns having a sleep as long as we could keep some glass on the hill. Um, and then yeah, action happened all around half past five. Yeah, deer started popping out all over the place. Mm. Anyway, we'll uh, settle in for the evening, have our bite to eat, and then make a recovery plan for tomorrow. Yes, we had a sleeping. Um, show you the old modular setup. I just added uh, uh, my recovery kit, my new recovery kit here. I'll just clip that on the back of there. So yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be about uh, maybe an hour or two to get to this first deer. Um, weather's almost the same as yesterday. Clags and thick, as you can see. Get down back onto the blind get a sight and go on it just to make sure it's not that far but yeah you know how things can get in the bush and um, see if we can't find this first deer with the sight and go set I had this overwhelming feeling of confidence that this was going to be an easy recovery you know the kind it's only just over there only 200 meters but you know things are never that easy and on our way down we got bluffed out waterfalls however we got to the bottom safely punched up the other side and well yep yeah i think we've gone too far 
the deer's over there because that's where you shot it, just up there. So I'll be in that gully just there. We're keen bro, we're yeah. keen mountain climbers. One job, one job we. Not only did he drop the camel camel on the ground last night, <laughs> took us right past the deer. Now come on Matty, the camel camel still tasted good and we weren't too far off. And what do you know, it wasn't too long, we found our deer. Been able to salvage some back steaks, a little bit of back leg. He's got a bit in his pack too. And on that note, it was packs on, back down into the creek, fuel up with some go-go juice, fill up our three liter hydro pack bladder for lunch, find a safer way back up the hill, along the top of the ridge and back to camp. Four hours. Anyway, get our camp packed up, have lunch and get ready to heavy pack up to the top of the hill and have a look for this other deer. So after a hearty lunch and packing up our campsite with big packs on, back up the ridge, another round of hunt smart, strip down into light order again and head off to find this other deer. Hey, we've uh, found where she was and that was the, the bonus of having the footage on the on the phone um, and uh, so when we heard her she shot off up there and around so um, we've got a little bit of blood there so we'll get our tracking well run out of blood that's the longest deer track I've ever put on that'd have to be um, two hours worth of tracking and we thought we had her, blood was good, blood was good, then the blood just disappeared. Um, but she's almost walked, I would say, 300 meters uphill from where she was hit. So uh, she was on good nick by the, by the looks of things for her to sort of box on and go hard. So hopefully she recovers from her wounds. And um, like I said, everything dried up. So you're kind of hoping that it would have healed up or well, the wound sealed up anyway, but unfortunate, but um, we gave it a good nudge, but we've still got one in the pack, so ah, go back, grab our packs, back down to the car. Ooh. All right, back at the car gonna start raining so gotta get that changed quick outro very quick oh bro your thoughts on the hunt quickly oh very good hunt yeah. good, good couple of days and can't say any more than about the lower boots though, oh man. yeah yeah I'm, I'm not actually paying him to say that too by the way no. he loves those boots um for me good to get out with our good luck charm here um got one deer bought yep. one some meat home um, unfortunately, hearty tracking didn't turn up uh, that other deer, which is, um, I mean, yeah, no one feels any more disappointed about losing a deer in those situations than the guys that uh, shot it and didn't recover it. So, yeah, um, yeah oh, I guess it's um, just another uh, hunt notched up for me and the bro. Uh, brother, thank you for coming along on another mission. Uh, highly like the next mission will probably be in the raw with this guy um, for him and I chasing uh stag roaring stags around pine blocks so um you guys i hope you guys enjoyed that video don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next mission <laughs>